a beautifully foolish endeavor. My book club and I read this. It was the follow-up to this bad boy, an absolutely remarkable thing. Let's talk about it. To celebrate, me and some of the girls got our Carls. But Carl back there, I don't know if you can see him, but he's always watching. I am going to give you guys my honest review of this book. The thing is, it's hard to talk about this one without accidentally spoiling some things in this one. So if you haven't read this one and you do not want to be spoiled even a little tiny bit, go away. Sorry, I love you, but go away. They are going to be very, very minor spoilers and I'm going to try not to spoil anything that doesn't directly relate to this book. So when we read this one, we all really liked it a lot. And that's when Carl became our book club mascot. It wasn't our favorite book that we read. It was really good, but it was, you know, it was just good. Let's just quickly recap what this one's about. So a 20 something, 23 I think, year old named April May is just walking around New York one night and she sees a big samurai sculpture in the middle of the road that hasn't been there before and she thinks it's pretty cool so she takes a video, uploads it, goes to sleep. When she wakes up, turns out it was a big freaking deal because they had just popped up all over the world and she was the first one to document it and it shoots her into viral stardom. It's got like that alien, otherworldly element but also it's about how internet fame and just sudden fame, viral fame in general, what it does to people. I don't want to spoil it, but stuff happens. And then it's this one. You guys, this book is incredible. Hank Green is the author. He's very well known on the internet, so you probably know him. His brother, John Green, uh, wrote Looking for Alaska, the Fault in Our Stars, Turtles All the Way Down, and The Abundance of Catherine, and so many. He's written lots of books. So I was a little bit nervous when Hank put out a book because I have been a nerd fighter for so long that I was afraid I wasn't going to like it. That would have been really awkward. So when we start this book, it is the Carls have disappeared just as suddenly as they showed up. And April May is gone. We don't know where she is. Um, but some of her friends are not willing to accept that she is dead because they've never found a body. Andy takes up her mantle with the social media. Uh, her ex is grieving and trying to figure things out. Yeah, they're just trying to find out what the heck happened and how to move forward in the world as it currently stands for them in the book. In this one, we get multiple perspectives, not just April May, who was a little annoying. In this one, we still get some April May, but the chapters are told from different characters' perspectives. Ones that we didn't get to really hear from that much, like what they were thinking in the first one. All of her friends get their own chapters, and Carl has his own chapters too. So we get to see the story from all sorts of different angles. They're telling you a linear story, but from the future. They're telling you what happened to them. Whoever's story is most relevant at the time is the one who's talking and the storylines line up in time so that you read one chapter and then the next chapter and the times overlap so you know what everybody's doing. He did a really great job of not making it too complicated, but enough that you feel like things are in motion. For a middle-aged white guy, he did a good job of focusing on different issues and not just pretending like things don't exist in the world. Knowing the Green Brothers, there's no way that he would have not consulted actual people before writing things from those perspectives, I don't think. I mean, I've been watching them for over 10 years. It would really surprise me. Hank is smart and sciency, and it comes through in this book, um, but he also is deeply passionate about the environment and things going on in the world. He didn't write this during the pandemic, but I think that it coming out during it changed it in ways that are accidentally really important. Having this book come out at the same time as the second wave of Black Lives Matter protests and the pandemic and just leadership issues some places in the world are having, it really, really adds to this book. There's no way he could have known all of this was coming, but 
you think he did. It is science-y without being out of reach. They're not YA, but they're not strictly adult fiction. They fall in that in-between, in that 20-something zone. It's set in the now, so Twitter is a big part of it. All of these social media platforms, YouTube, that we use and the way that we use them are relevant in the book, just like they are in real life. It's not pretending like those things aren't there. And since such a big part of this book, really the point of this book, is how technology is changing us and what we're doing in the world. I really liked it. Um, I re definitely recommend both of them. This one's good. If you're not crazy about it, still pick this one up because it's better. It's so rare that the next one is better than the first one to me, but this one did it. When we were doing book club, we couldn't find any discussion questions online, so as a group, we made our own. My friend Jen has them listed out on her blog, so if you're looking for discussion questions for this book, for your book club, head over there and you can use those. Uh, we had a really good discussion about it and it was really fun. Thanks for watching. Uh, like the video, subscribe, ring the bell. It helps me out. I will see you on Friday.